Okay. We are, we are heading into our next track, into the next talk. Uh, if, you, if you remember the, the call for proposals, you might remember that we kind of tried to open the call in, in that we tried to lure people in who are not directly connected to, to OpenCast, who talk about uh, academic video in, in general. And the next talk, while Pascal is uh, sort of uh, acquainted to, to OpenCast or SwitchCast uh, via Moodle, uh, the next talk is uh, going to be about uh, interactive video and uh, not directly linked to OpenCast. And we're happy to hear from an e-learning perspective of uh, what seems to be state of the art in uh, video and e-learning. Thank you, Pascal. Go ahead. You're welcome. Is that working here, the headset? Or okay, great. Yeah, so hello everybody, welcome to this uh, presentation about the interactive video suite, which is basically the uh, Moodle version of a product called EduBreak um, by the company GhostSinker in Germany, in Augsburg. They have this tool um, in the market since many years for the education of sports trainers, but also for um, education of teachers. As you will show, it has really a, a lot of nice features in it, and we wanted to. You can use it uh, as a customer. You can just buy it as a software as a service, but then it's not really that. Um, the price is quite substantial, so we are the second university which uses it inside Moodle after the University of uh, Landau. I'm not totally sure in in, in Germany somewhere. And we are, I'm actually developing the functionality of the tool quite heavily together with them. So we have a nice collaboration in terms of functions. So they wanted to do this uh, new features anyway, and we are really made it happen by, and we have a, like a um, development contract. So half of the costs are also covered by themselves because they want to do uh, explore, um, expand their product for the market anyway. So what it does actually, it um, does mainly two things. The first is what you, we heard already a bit with the annotation tool, which um, is inside OpenCast or SwitchCast. And that is of course a solution. Um, for us, the usability of this annotation was not really what we were looking for. It was a bit too, not so user friendly, a bit cumbersome. I think it, it's okay. It's it's very nice if you do very detailed things, like for example, if you want to analyze a um, a conversation between a doctor and a patient, psychology things, social things. Um, we just wanted to have something a bit different in our um, natural sciences <coughs> context. So that's why we use annotation this way. So what you see there, I'll on the top right, so every user which logs in there uh, has its little image, and then you see in, in immediately, like you see, you know it from WhatsApp and, and Facebook and all the pages, who has said what, and you see also you have first level comments, and then you have like the second level comments, which make refer to another comment, and all that is around images. But I'll come to the detail again. The second big feature is uh, you can add um, questions as overlays over the video. And we have three types of questions we have requested. And this is single choice, really one best answer, not multiple choice, one best or correct answer. Click zone, you can, um, I'll show that in a minute, you can have to find a certain zone, a hotspot, or essay open text. Students have to write an open text. And we strongly believe, and research really uh, uh, supports this, that uh, you have a bit an issue actually with video learning because it creates a kind of a bit of illusion of understanding. You can have a very good video, but it takes five minutes, eight minutes, and uh, students watch it, and they, it can really, not, not so seldom, it can have the effect that they understand everything they somehow think, yeah, it's all clear, I have understood it, I won't look at it again before the exam preparation. 
So we think because e video is so rich in terms of, of messages, of audiovisual cues, of, of sound, of images, and you know that that happens so much that um, we think it's a good idea to interrupt the video from time to time and to put in um, a reflection, a task, whatever. That's why the call, uh, the original product is called Edu Break. <laughs> you could argue it's not maybe the most uh, creative title, but it's just that's why you break. You make a break into the video. That's the idea behind it. Uh, yeah, break, make a break. It's a B R E A K. Yeah, it, it's it's whatever. It's just um, okay. So what you have actually, you have three different um, features, and that's why uh, why it's so rich. You will see. You will. Um, there's no tool on the market, to my knowledge, which can do the same thing, all these three things in one tool, which is commenting mode, which is actually annotation, and also in a very user-friendly style. You have a question mode where you can, um, just a little slide more commenting, you can do also, for example, in, in YouTube to some extent, but also on, on Vimeo, you, has a, you have a reasonable commenting um, possibility, but ours is different. Then you have the question mode, which I will show with these three types of question which you can create and put on top of the video. And you have something which I think is fairly unique. You have a video editing mode inside the player as well. Uh, we heard uh, there before uh, video cutting is sometimes needed. You can do that even in here. You can take the video, just make cut from here to here, zack. It's done in 10 seconds. I'll show you that. So I think, and the three things together, I think is, is really interesting. Um, okay, I start with the commenting functions. Um, classical didactical scenario is that you ask your students to um, comment. You make an assignment. You, you say um, you can insert actually an, um, a task. I, I haven't done this here. So on the top there, for example, in the lab, you could say, what do you observe here? Um, and then the users can do several things. They can write their text on, onto that situation. Um, and they can also um, add use a, um, like a traffic light to, uh, to say this is a a good uh, case of, this is positive, or this is so-so, I don't know, or this is bad, this is dangerous, whatever. You can then decide to what uh, meaning you assign these traffic colors. So we ha you have, from a um, usability perspective, as a teacher, you can browse then through very fast these comments, and you can just put, uh, say, I want to see all the red how many people think something is wrong here, something is dangerous, then you quickly look for the red dots. That's the idea a bit behind. So I, s I strongly believe uh, in these things, these visual cues, these colors. And the nice thing also, you can add, that every user can add um, um, a sign onto the video. They can put a mar um, an arrow onto the image or a square and they can move that around. So they can, in addition to their text comment, they can make a sign so that their comment is really clear. And then what you get as, the, um, as a teacher in the report, you get from every user, you get exactly the picture the person has watched uh, when writing the comment, if the person has added a, a graphical element, if it's there, you see it and you see the text. And then you see you have this whole series here um, of the people. Uh, th this is a person, this is a person, that's another person. So you see these were three comments to that comment. Um, that's another one here again and so on. And it, they could have marks inside. 
If you have any questions, I suggest you ask right away. Otherwise, I continue. So that's really, uh, and we can now have, so that's uh, um, a first version, how the te teaching staff can look at the comments. In addition, we have now an Excel export where all the texts are then in an Excel file. They can use it then for further analysis, text clouds, text mining. If you have 200 students and you don't want to browse through all the texts, so you can export it as Excel and do whatever you want with this text. The next is, um, yeah, as I said, these three question types, single choice, click question, essay, for example, I find a dangerous thing uh, for the click zone. How you do that, you, um, when you start the video, you can then select, uh, there is a s such a dialogue. You say you want to edit and uh, test the questions, you want to manage them, you can create that and then uh, or you can start as like a user. You have these two possibilities. Formative assessment, it's called when you want to look at the interactions like a user. Otherwise, you, you select as manage questions. So you select that. Then once you're there, you can select your question type. Then this appears. We recommend single choice by many reasons. It's just really easier for the handling uh, than multiple choice also for the analysis. And we say you, you find either correct answers or sometimes it's, it's a best answer. Um, click question, find a certain zone or enter a free text, you select that. Now let's, then uh, you can very precisely uh, select the, mom the moment where the question shall appear. So first you, you just stop the video, but when you see, oh, it's slightly beside, you can, you can click on this timer and really by uh, milliseconds you can shift around if you want that. So and you can also, uh, next time when editing, you can move it slightly if needed. Uh, then you would save the question. That's just general for all these question types. If you want to edit it, you have just the edit button. Uh, just very simple, really, how it, all very simple interface. And that's how it looks like when the people create a single choice question. So it's fairly straightforward. You have just the question text, you have the answer. Um, and the nice thing, you see it immediately appearing on the screen. And that's one reason we, we looked at other tools. We saw this editing is really very easy and fast and you, you, you have a good image. Uh, an important detail is you can shift around this field of the question because sometimes you need the full image in the background to answer the question. So you, as a user, you can shift it around, but also you can here open and close it. So only the bar stays. That's also an important detail. And then um, that's the uh, uh, feedback image. For example, the person has clicked this one. Then you have a full feedback text and you have the possibility to, um, to create an, a feedback text for each answer option, which we think is also very important to to have to exploit really the possibilities for the learning you, you want to tell them why b is not correct and why c is not the best answer not just right or wrong which many of the simpler tools do um, so you have this immediate preview you create here the choices you can also uh, select random order of the of the answer options which in a formative assessment mode, we don't really recommend, but in a testing mode, you could do that. So you have both option. Um, as I said, we recommend really a, a detailed explanation for each answer option. So you mark which answer is correct. And with this one, 
you give specific um, answers. If a person doesn't want to do that, they can also leave it blank and then it would just have a graphical red, uh, red or green uh, icon to say right or wrong. And now that's um, a brand new feature which really goes very far and what it does, so it you can in addition to a text feedback, you can uh, select that as, as the feedback action which appears to the user, you get to see a specific little video clip. If you imagine uh, in medicine, for example, um, you could say if you select this in a procedure, if you do this, then you could um, have a second video clip which shows the consequences, uh, which could be harmful. And what you would do, you would put this video clip at the very end of the original video. So normally nobody gets to see that. So in, uh, it's really on the, on the side, at after the end of the video are these little feedback video clips and you would jump to those, to those clips and say, if a person selects this answer, they will jump to that little video sequence. I think that will be really interesting. I think it also from a motivational point. Some years ago I did a video where I had a, a nice person and we recorded him um, standing here and he said, sorry, A is not correct because blah, blah, blah. And then we recorded him again. B, no, look at this, it's not good because. So we recorded these little sections and when the people clicked in the single choice, buff this, this person jumped to them and it was really like a one-to-one -one conversation. So I come to you, I give an answer to your answer and they really loved it. And I loved it too, so <laughs> I let the company develop it. I think it has a huge potential if you use it correctly. And to do this is really, again, super easy. You just jump to that sequence, you select, uh, you make, a, let's the, the whole video here is all feedback videos. You just select, uh, select a little clip uh, for the answer one. People will see this sequence. For the answer two, they will see another little uh, video sequence. Okay, so that's the video feedback function. Now, uh, any questions to that? Yes? I don't fully understand. Well, no, you... Well, that would be more in the in the commenting uh, area where um, where you can select there. Um, maybe I, I have to quickly jump to the tool to show you that. Um, Now it's the you can <coughs> you could say that the student would uh, should when he writes a comment here he should select let like, just a private. Okay private mode, you can norm, uh, normally would say course mode or private, then you can have like a, a two person conversation, but that would only work with comments, with questions that doesn't, it maybe doesn't make so much sense uh, either because you have a, a, a question and you have a specific feedback to it. Uh, you could even say uh, my question shall be, you, 
shall be all my comments should be you seen by this group of three colleagues nobody else so if you have a large cohort you can make little groups and they discuss among them about the video so that's possible as well Sorry, how much time I have left? Five minutes, okay. So, so that's the single choice and the special feedback. This is now the click question. Uh, in this case, I made it uh, uh, super simple. I, I, I just added this field was the zone to be found. So it says, where is the green zone, just as a demo case. And then you see if a person clicks here, it gets, uh, the, the person gets a red dot and the feedback tags incorrect. If a person clicks here, you don't see it well, it gets green, you get correct. So you can really um, mark hot, hot spots in the image and then give feedback if persons have correctly found something for example, a dangerous setup. So we, we will use it for safety, for lab safety. Uh, they, we, there is even a, a, some um, setups by, by purpose which dangerous things and they have to see it. And, and then the, the teacher can see it how, ma how many of the students have actually found the dangerous things. Uh, you, you, I can think of many scenarios where you can use that. Um, so you, you select uh, the zone where people must click and you select, it, it can be round, can be a rectangle. Um, you can also have different zones if, if two things would be correct to be clicked on. Okay, um, and the third thing is just very easy. Um, in comparison to the single choice where you ask people to find one best correct answer. Uh, of course, it's another cognitive um, task to say, what would you think? Why is this step essential? Or what is the next step? Or why was this code programmed this way? What is wrong? You can think of many things. Uh, and of course, then uh, people have to think more. So for the teachers, often this gives a very interesting, rich, uh, feedback, what the students are thinking. So that's the third type that looks like this. Very simple again. You can adapt the maximum number of characters, have a feedback option or not. So of course you can, there's no artificial intelligence built in which analyzes the answer and, and then gives a feedback. But it can say, okay, you have said something, um, in my view, uh, we were thinking of ABC, and then the person can reflect herself or, um, mm, all right, I, I wrote something else, but now I understand. You, you see, that way you can uh, deal with it. And then as the report, just to quickly finish, for each question you have then, inform, um, you get the, the question type, um, what it is about, you get um, indication how many of the persons um, were correct in the first attempt and how many in the last. So because you can retry, you have a nice image also how many people have tried again, uh, how many people were engaged to do that again. So that is also counted. Um, so you have then the names, you can de go into the questions, you have the names of the person. Sorry, that is a, a wrong screenshot, I should have made that. So you will really see um, if the person was correct, which answer they have selected in the single choice to say, so m how many people clicked on A, B, C, or D? So you have a nice analysis of that. So you get, you, you get to know if your question maybe was too easy or too hard uh, and how many repetitions were done. Um, yes, 
that's basically it. And from the free text, you will just have the, the whole text there, what people have written. So uh, as a last short comment, um, there is a tool which is very uh, popular. It's called H5P, and it will even be a, an official Moodle plugin. It does many of the same things, adding questions to, to videos. Um, we were then deciding which company to select. And I talked about five hours with the CEO of that company. I explained them exactly what we wanted. And we came to the conclusion that we go with the other company because of different reasons that this tool can do many other things like um, many of this e-learning functionalities like drag and drop or missing text or a lot of things. And they cannot focus so deeply on the video features. So uh, many of the features which we have now and wanted, they would have had to develop. And it, it would have been quite costly. And in our uh, evaluation, uh, we just had a better feeling overall with the other company. But you will see many, uh, many times this H5P. It, you can also use it. You can also do s simple things with questions on videos, but not as deep and rich functionality as our tool, we think. So if you have any questions or would like to, oh, well, time is over, uh, just very shortly, if I can, one minute. This, what I told you, is really interesting. So you can go actually into the video and create, um, you can cut uh, a sequence, you can write onto the video. So for simple things, you don't have to go to a video editor. Um, you can pause it, you can zoom in, you can change the play rate, all this also in the same tool. So you can adapt your video uh, to that. And I think all the three functions together, I think are really a, a nice and rich package. So if you are interested in that, in a trial, uh, they have also like a demo site, which uh, if you're interested, you, I'm happy you can contact me and then I can connect you to them. So you could try it all out a bit on your own. Any questions left? Or yes? Yeah. <laughs> H5P, it's open source, so maybe you should comment on it. It's not a commercial company. And uh, the other thing, when you jump to a video as a feedback one, after you watch this video, it comes back to the same point and you can go on watching the video. I mean, if you... Uh, stop this in the middle of the video and jump after answering the question to the end of the video to see the feedback video. And after you watch this video, you turn back to the same point you left the video. Yes. And you can also from the video, feedback video, to point to another point of the video. I mean, building sort of branch and... Uh, yes, we... We looked at not too many options are possible just really from, so you either you can jump to, to a, a sequence which is actually after the, the effect the video, or you can also jump to a, a previous sequence in the same video. You can do both. Um, yeah. Yes? I looks very interesting to get most of the, of the videos. So I'm, I'm quite interested, so I have a lot of questions. Yes, uh, a couple of them now. One question is, uh, this is all the front end. The back end is in the company or is it a local back end or so? It's all, uh, no, it's all in-house. It's in, 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 in the Moodle server, it's stored. Uh, it's uh, all the data is stored uh, on our Moodle. On, on the Moodle, yes. Okay, so it's, it's only working for Moodle, I guess, or or you know you have more. Uh, the other thing is uh, you can rent it as software as a service from their server. Then you buy licenses. Mm -hmm. But we have plans, yes, to that the tool can use be uh, used in in WordPress <laughs> most likely. They're thinking also about Confluence. Uh, but for LMS, that's the only one they they offer a Moodle by now. So. Another question is, how do you deal with, with access rights? So what a student can access uh, a video? Only the registered students in a, in a course or whatever student or? 
Yes, it's it's always connected to the to the access rights of that Moodle course. Oh yeah, so, so the the, 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 the user shall decide. Role. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and finally, the this is of course more work for teachers. Uh, this is my my guess. Managing a course like that. So do do you have feedback from the teachers that are using the the product? Or yes, absolutely. Uh, they liked it a lot. We had we had used it last autumn. Uh, the commenting function. Uh -huh. and they really uh, wanted to have a good indicator if the students watch the video. If and not only watching, uh, put on play and go have a coffee. Um, but really, say in the middle of thing, there's a little task, and they want to discuss about it. And yeah, we have already quite some some professors which are interesting for for specific things. For example, lab safety medical things, but also for engineering, understanding certain processes. And we use it also for uh, ed for the um, teaching that the student tutors, the young teachers which support the professors, they will get to see certain teaching situations um, in the classroom and they say, what happens here? Talk about it or how did the person maybe not behave in a good way? Why? What would you do next? Do you have a problem in the teaching? You can use it really for social sciences. And, and I mean, three people already did their PhD about teacher education with this tool. So it's really um, has a lot of different possibilities. OK, we are over time. Just please write to me if you have further questions. I'm very happy. I can really recommend that you have a look. I think it's, uh, in my view, really the, 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 f the way of it to go um, to offer videos not only just as they are. So yeah. um, we now have two subjects and I must say that I Thank sorry. you.